right, guys, I got a 2006 Lincoln Zephyr, which is basically a, a Ford Fusion, same thing. And since it is, a, it is an 06, there's plenty of time and, and, uh, and driving miles to accumulate a lot of corrosion. And the front end is starting to corrode. You see the wheels are pretty bad. And uh, the reason this one came in for is because it has one heck of a popping noise in the front end. And it sounds like the suspension just blew apart. And uh, while you're going down the road and you want to pull over right away, that's how loud it is. For me, for experience, I know it's the coil that's popping, the actual coil spring. But uh, it, it's, it sounds like the world's coming apart. You know, it's just from underneath you. And it's unmistakable. And we're going to show you exactly what the, what's going on. I put it up in the air. And once I turned the wheels and I inspected the underside and everything looked okay, once you turn the wheels, you can see the one side is not turning like it should from the strut bearing. And uh, it, it's tensioning up, tensioning up, and then you go over a pothole or something like that, and it just releases, and uh, it, it's a loud noise. You'll, this is not a crunching or clunking noise. This is a boom. And it just reverberates through the car. It, it's loud. Okay, this is the driver's side. And this one should also turn when I'm turning the wheel down here, especially when I'm doing it full lock to lock. So I'll try to do it while I'm holding the camera here. It might be a little bumpy. Go we'll full lock to the left. Okay, you can see it's not moving at all. And then we'll go full lock to the right. And it's still not moving. The bottom part of the spring is moving with the arms down here because it has a double arm design, but uh, the top part should still swivel with it. Okay, same thing. This is the passenger side, and this bearing is okay. You'll see how it's supposed to move and look. Full lock. Okay, so in order to fix this, we're going to have to pull the actual strut assembly out of there, and then we're going to disassemble it and change the strut bearing on top, and we're going to change the actual shock absorber part of it, because it's a coil over shock design, and uh, we're going to change the shock just because it has 120,000 miles on it, and of course we already know from the inspection that the upper strut bearing is binding and causing that boing pop noise around turns uh, intermittently. So first thing we're going to do, obviously, is pull the wheel off. 19 millimeter. Okay, so these are very easy to get out compared to, let's say, a uh, Ford Taurus from back in 2000, where you had the big old knuckle going through the, the actual strut and you're trying to get it out of there and lowering the subframe and all kinds of other craziness. These, these are more of a foreign design that you may see on, a, on, on a Asian type cars and uh, they're very easy to get off. Now the manual has you pulling lower ball joints and, and popping it out of the way and to get enough room for this uh, lower fork to come down. It's all unnecessary and I'll show you a little trick on that. So right here there's a, there's a 14 millimeter bolt. We're just going to take that out and it actually clamps the fork to the um, shock here. So let's pull that out first. Get that out of the way and it'll start loosening up then its clamp on there and then follow your brake hose right here around and it curves around and right here is where it attaches to uh, the shock it bolts to the shock there in a little bracket it's a 10 millimeter take that out <coughs> and that way our shock is not attached to anything and then, let's take a little ride down. Woo! See if we can get you in here so you can see. I could turn the uh, caliper out of the way, too. There we go. Movie magic. Okay, should be able to see it. Yeah, there it is. There's a big, long bolt right here. It has a flag nut in the back side that will hold it for you. This is a 15 millimeter. We need to take that out. There goes the flag nut. 
and then you just have to move it around a little bit and it'll pull out wiggle it Back up you go. Okay, so on this fork right here, all you gotta do is slide it down once all those bolts are out. You could try to wiggle it down and get it most of the way off of there. But we're probably gonna have to use a hammer and tap it down a little bit. And don't worry about it, suspension components are very, very strong. And they're strong for a reason. What you don't wanna do is start pulling this uh, the stab link right here, actual stabilizer bar link, those ones have no holding feature to them and then the uh, the nuts on them get really rusted and you'll be burning up your stab links to be changing stab links next. There's no need for it. So we're just going to do this, wiggle a little bit so we can get some room. Just make sure your wheel's straight and then uh, you should be able to slide it off whole thing starts moving on you and you can move it down with it. There we go. It's a little bit of a fight but if you bring the whole suspension down like this it'll help. And then your actual fork right here will just sit here. It leans forward for you already, and it's out of our way. At this point, this whole strut right here is free to go. You just need to pull the three 14 millimeter nuts up top on the strut tower, way up there, and then we can pull it off. Up top here in the engine compartment, here's those three nuts I was talking about. We need to pull off. They're 14 millimeter. Do not touch this one. The center of that one's actually keeping the whole strut together and uh, contain the spring tension and all that. So don't touch that one just yet. And I keep the nuts up here so they're easy, they're easy access. Uh, when you're putting it back in with one hand and you're trying to thread it in by the other hand, they're right next to the actual strut mount and it makes it a lot easier. And they're in the right place uh, going back together. Now this last one, make sure you support the strut down below and uh, Take it out. And there it is. Comes right out. Alright, then you're going to want to put it in a vise or some other kind of holding device so you can concentrate on compressing the spring itself. Uh, before we do that, we're going to mark the location. There we go. We're going to mark the location of this top strut mount to in, in uh, reference some point down below. I use the end of the spring right here, the quail spring. And you go straight up, right? And then right about there to that mark right there is where uh, it lines up with. So we're going to make the same mark on this one and then we can start taking it apart at that point. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to compress the spring here and uh, get it compressed enough so that we, this top plate spins smoothly uh, so we can take it off safely. We're gonna pull this top cap off of here. And this may get boring, but it's good to know where to place them and how it looks when it's done right so that it actually compresses down and we can get it off of there safely. It's very important because this has a lot of tension to it and it can uh, do a lot of damage to property and to uh, personnel too. So you want to be very careful and watch what you're doing as you're, you're doing it here. Now this one, since we have it off the car, yes there's spring pressure on it, but I should still be able to turn this top plate here and I cannot. You can see it's trying to turn the whole spring again. nothing and you'll see when we're done I'll do the same thing and you'll be able to see it I'll be able to do it with ease I'll be able to move it with, with ease um, which is how it should be
Okay, so we got nice and tight in there. And then you're going to want to get a, a strut spring compressor or something like this. This one's the most common. Let me reassemble it real quick. There it is. It looks something like this. And these ones go on the bottom and this one goes on top. And you place them on either side of the actual spring so you can compress it evenly. Um, certain ones require a third compressor and this one um, is, is a good candidate for that. Okay, so the way you're going to want to do this is to make it up and down as straight as possible. These quills are at an angle instead of being flat, so it will cock a little bit like that. But what, what you're going to want to do is get the lowest one you can get quill and the highest one you can get um, with these things able to actually hook around them. Sometimes they're really close and you can't see if you move it over a little bit and, and be able to hook the highest and the lowest that you can so you can get a full compression. And then right across from each other, we're going to do another one. And then we're going to compress them and go from there. And it looks something like that. Try to straighten it before you start actually compressing it and hold it a little bit. And you can see it's starting to come down. Um, the way to tell uh, if it's actually compressed enough to start loosening the center nut is you should be able to turn this top part here. See I can turn it? Because all the pressure's off of it. Now this one's still moving a little bit um, too hard for me. It's too hard to turn it. So we are going to keep compressing. Okay, now it feels good. One-handed, no problem. So it's verify you can do that by hand. You can do it with your little, just, you know, a little bit of pressure, and you know it's compressed enough. After that, we need to pull the 14 millimeter up top here, and pull it off slowly still. A little at a time. And keep moving it. Okay, we're good. And the most important thing when you're doing this is that this or this spring is not facing you or any kind of property, I guess you could say, uh, that you don't want to destroy in case this thing comes off. This is going to go like this and it'll launch. So if it launches at the ceiling, who cares as long as it's not my face? And then you should be able to pull us off. This bearing in here is actually really bad. So bad it's cracking. It's like one piece, really. Wow. Let's see if we can show you that. Let me 
focus for you. Ooh. Still too close, freaking out. Okay, you can see this one. Look how bad it is. It's really freaking bad. It's so bad it's cracking. It's one piece. It's not acting as a bearing, a bushing, or anything at this point. And that's why we're getting that loud pop noise. It's not moving at all. And then boom. So that's how uh, you. That's one thing you should look at when you're uh, taking yours apart. This one's really bad. This one's very obvious. Now this one's from the other side that I already did. And you can see there's two pieces to it and there's actual little ball bearings inside here and some grease. And you should be able to like this. Spin it. You can see a difference between the two and why it was making all that noise. Okay, so back to the actual strut here. It's going to be stuck to it a little bit. This part right here is your upper mount. It's the other half of the mount we're changing, the bearing. Pull your boot off of here. You can toss this. And then just lift this off of here, something like that, and then put it on the ground pointing away from you. Don't forget your Jones bumper. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to dust this off, these boots, uh, this upper mount, and your Jones bumper. And then we're going to actually grease this Jones bumper because there's actually a TSP about these causing noise also. So we're going to grease uh, this up also. Now your upper actual spring isolator mount here, we're going to be reusing that. And your boot, and then your jounce bumper, we're going to clean them all up. And then we're going to put some grease in this jounce bumper all the way around the top here, the center, and down here, so that uh, it doesn't make no noise. And there's actually a TSB about that, that these were causing noise, but uh, that's not our noise, but we don't want to induce a new noise. Okay, we got everything all cleaned up, and I'm going to apply dielectric grease, brake dielectric grease, uh, mainly because it's waterproof and all that, to the top here and the bottom here, where it made contact. We'll put that back on. And then this boot actually goes on to your new upper mount and it kind of clamps onto it, hooks onto it, something like that. And you put it all on together. And now it's time for our spring. Let's put it on there. And there's a stop right here on the actual sh uh, shock right here. And then there's the end of the spring. You know to match those up and then bring it all the way till it stops like that. And then back it off a little bit, 10 millimeters or less. Now on your upper mount, you're gonna have an indent right here, and that is the end of the top spring. So we need to match that up with the top of the spring, which is right here. And then that lines up perfectly. And then we'll take our upper mount assembly with boot and slip it over. It's going to take some finagling. There we go. lined up. We got our strut rod going through the center of this hole right here. 
and then just make sure our white marks from earlier, which are right here, match the end of the spring down here. Now yours, like mine, may need a third a spring compressor because this one side right here goes high and it starts cocking out like that and then it pushes the mount up. So you're going to need to compress these two either way, a little more. And then, as soon as you can, you see threads coming through, you should put this nut on in there. Make sure you get it on it by hand. Now once it's even like that, and looks good all the way around, smooth, all that stuff, we can tighten up the, uh, the nut. Now make sure your marks are still lined up. They can start loosening. post check and make sure your marks line up, uh, your springs are sitting in the right places on the upper cushion and down below here, that one looks good, everything's centered, it's even gap all the way around, and then one last check, it should be all spin by hand just like this. And then when going back in, line up your hole right here that you should be able to see we marked before line that up with this plug right here it's gonna be a plug right here line up with that and then the rest of these holes will follow for the um, actual strut just get it up through there just like that one hand and then uh, start a few nuts loose and a hole for us and then going back in it should be even easier I put a little bit of grease down here on the actual uh, bottom of the shock so it goes in a little easier and just make sure your shock is on the right side because these are different left to right in case you're doing these in pairs because there's a you know the bolt back here for the line bracket and all that stuff should all match right up so do a quick check and make sure we're on the right side and uh, then we can go from there I use a pry bar to bring it down just a little bit. And then you can see it comes in a lot easier. Straighten it out, release the pry bar. Now I'm putting this actual fork up into here. It goes all the way up and there's a little nub in the center of the actual shock. And that will go right in the center here. And then there's a stop right here built into this shock also. So let's push it all the way up. And then we can put the... Uh, 14 millimeter bolt back in here that actually clamps it down and we can do that right now get it all the way up and centered and after that we're going to do the big bolt down below where it goes into the lower arms we just have to move it around a little bit And I actually put blue Loctite on everything that I uh, touch on suspension parts. You don't want them coming apart. And these we're just going to snug for now and once um, the weight is on the vehicle we can torque each one of these ones down 
that uh, come in contact with bushings like this one. We don't want to be tweaking the bushings. And before we forget, let's put this little 10 millimeter bolt in that holds the brake line to the shock. And that should all line up just right if you did it right. Let's go right into the bracket. Everything looks good. Looks good here up top. After that, throw your wheels back on, torque them down, and then once the weight of the vehicle is on the suspension, we can come over here and torque down these uh, three nuts on here. And I'll put all the torque specs down below in the description. Okay, now also, while the weight of the vehicle is on the suspension, we want to torque down that lower bolt that goes through the lower control arm from the shock fork that we just snugged up earlier. Now's the time to torque that down.